Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And uh, the previous show I did it was a review, a quick review of this new MFJ antenna analyzer. And I tested my G5 RV antenna, and I told you that it didn't look too good, and I was going to give you some explanations of why I thought it wasn't working too good. And here is, here, I did another pass just before I started this video, and another scan, and here's the results of the scan. This is the SWR reading, and you can see it's got two dips, uh, one at 13.2 megahertz, and then this other one over here, let me get a little bigger, is at about 6.8 megahertz, right there. And I didn't test it any lower than that. Um, so are, these are the two points at the lowest SWR reading, which is what you want to achieve. And um, my setup for my antenna, this is a, a pictorial representation of my antenna that I got off of the Internet. And... Um, the antenna itself is about 102 to 104 feet long, which is a struggle for me, and I've had to put it diagonally across my lot to be able to stretch this out all the way. And I've showed um, a video of my antennas, including this one. And the way this one is set up, it's on a short pole, about, about three-foot pole, that's attached to the peak of my second story roof. And so it makes it about 15 to 17 feet up in the air at the peak. And then it slopes down, in my case, it slopes down uh, to a pole in the front yard and the pole in the backyard that's about seven feet above the ground. So it's pretty close to the ground. As you can see in this illustration here, you want it to be 25 to 50 feet above the ground. So there's there's a problem right now because mine is at the maximum maybe 17 feet, and then it goes down to about 6 feet. So mine looks like this with the peak here peak here being 17 feet, nowhere close to this 25 feet or to 50 feet. So, number one, my antenna is too close to the ground, and that's going to affect its performance and um, the measurements that I take on it, such as the one I just took with reading the SWR. So that's one problem. The next problem is it has this 300 ohm twin lead um, cable here that goes down to the ballum. This is, I can't remember exactly, but I think this is about 25 to 30 feet. And since I only have it 17 feet up in the air at maximum, uh, and this actually ends up laying on my second story roof. And so it's kind of, it's not coiled up, but it's laying on that second story roof, at, which is at, at about 10 feet. So this is another problem I've got. This should be stretched out to its full length, and it's not. Um, now the ballum's okay. I think the ballum is okay. My antenna is about 25 years old including the coax that brings it into the house. So this is a pretty old antenna. Um, the, the coax um, is, again, a little long. It doesn't need to be as long as it is, but it is. And so that's probably another problem that affects it. Uh, and, and I can say this coax, this whole antenna system is probably 25 to 30 years old. So, you know, it could be breaking down. So I'm not surprised I'm getting results like this, where 
the SWR is not that good at any spot and it's not very good at very many spots. Now, basically what I should be seeing is, and I didn't take it all the way down to 80 meters or 4 megahertz when I did the scan, but uh, from what I've read, this thing is tuned for this full length here, which is basically 80 meters, and the antenna should work um, at its best on that frequency. So this is a full wavelength for 80 meters um, with all the matching and everything, of course. And therefore, it should be acting as a half-wave dipole at 40 meters and then a quarter wave at 20 meters and so on down. So it should be resident at those frequencies, which is um, for 80 meters is about uh, about 3.8 megahertz, and 40 meters is about 7 megahertz, and 20 meters is um, about 15 megahertz. Oh, excuse me, 14 megahertz. 14 megahertz. So I'm seeing a dip at, meaning the SWR is good, it's actually 1.88 at 7 megahertz. So it, it's meeting this. I didn't test the 80 meters. And at 14 megahertz, just crank it up here to 14 megahertz. It's going back up, and at 14 megahertz, it's the SWR is 3.74, so it's not doing too good there. If I back up to where it is at the minimum up there, that is about 13.44 megahertz. So it's a little off, and the SWR is 2.09, which is pretty good. So I could do, let me just hook it up here temporarily, and uh, I'm going to change, well, actually I'm going to do a single test, and I'm, no, I'll, I'll change the center point of the um, scan to change it to lower, I want to change it to 6 megahertz. And we'll change the span, since I'm down lower, um, to 6 megahertz. And then I'll change the center frequency up a little higher. Change it up to 7. So that would be 7 minus 3. Whoops. That, 7 minus 3, that would be 4 megahertz. I'm going to go a little lower than that. So let's change the span. Uh, you, could, you can't change the span um, directly. You can, you've can. you only got span widths that you can choose from. And so I've got 6 megahertz and the next one will be 12 megahertz. Um, so let's go back to 6 megahertz. 6 megahertz and then I'll change uh, I want to get down to about 3 megahertz. So if I start with 6, and the span is 6, I get half of that. That's 3, that's 3 megahertz. So let me just change this center frequency to 6 megahertz, and we're going to run the test and see what we get down there on the lower band. Okay, it's testing now. And um, let me uh, disconnect the antenna so I can bring the meter closer to the camera. Okay, so you can see here's a dip up here. Let's go up. Oops, I'm going the wrong way, of course. So here's my dip at 6.9, which is what I had before. I had a dip at um, about 7 megahertz. And now we'll go down and see what it's doing uh, towards 80 meters or 4 megahertz. 
So we'll come down here and see this little dip here. And it turns out that little dip is not that good. It's 3.76 SWR and it's at 3.62 megahertz. So it didn't dip as long as low as it should have on the SWR and it didn't even dip at the right frequency. So my antenna is not doing too good at the lower frequencies. But um, as I said before, it was doing pretty good at 6 megahertz and at uh, 13 point something megahertz. So just wanted to ex kind of explain to you that my particular G5 RV is not in an ideal situation. It's too close to the ground, number one. I don't have this twin lead uh, piece of the antenna stretched out like it should be. I got it coiled, not coiled up, but I got it in a pile. And the same thing with this coax, number one, it's too long. I don't need it that long. And that's just piled in a pile. So that kind of explains why my G5 RV is not working ideally. But it is still working pretty good, as you've seen in some of my videos. So anyway, uh, that's the show for today. Um, I hope that provides you some useful information. These are pretty good antennas because they're multi-band, but they take up a lot of room. So you got to have a lot of room. Um, I was originally trying to make this a little better but I just I didn't have the room uh, I don't have a big yard so I couldn't stretch it out the way it should be I couldn't get it high enough in the air because I don't I no longer have a tower because the city says you can't have a tower in the city so I'm violating some of the setups that should be a, adhered to when using this antenna so probably if I find a Another antenna that's shorter, it will probably actually do better than this if it's set up properly. So that's the show. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you enjoyed the show, share it. Share it to uh, Google+, Plus, to Twitter. You can even share it on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.